Now, I'm fed up with all this gender nonsense. It is blatantly clear to the majority of people all over the world that there are only two genders. And it has been that way from as far back as the existence of mankind. Anyone can change their physical appearance or pretend to be something that they're not. But the clue is in the word pretend. Telling children at an early age that they can be a boy if they're a girl or vice versa and embellishing a fantasy, be it brought on by gender dysphoria or some other influence, can only end in disaster. Now, it starts with seemingly innocent ideals like gender pronouns whose list has reached over 70, most of which have been made up. And this is simply the tip of an iceberg that, in my view, can end in gender dysphoria and children making decisions that they may later regret because they are children and not equipped to make adult decisions like, say, for example, deciding to begin life-changing procedures like taking puberty blockers, which can affect their cognitive functions and their development into adulthood. It seems odd that they're considered wise enough to make this sort of decision whilst in the same breath not being allowed to legally have sex or vote. Doesn't that strike you as a bit ridiculous? Thank goodness. The Tavistock and Portman NHS Foundation Trust have been told to shut its gender identity clinic for children and a more holistic approach is being adopted. But frankly, most of the population could have told you that from the start. I mean, it beggars belief that my taxes were going towards such a thing and that it is actually part of the NHS. Thank goodness for brave people like Kira Bell who spoke out about her experience of the roller coaster that children found themselves on in this gender identity nightmare. She's now detransitioned, but has been left with lasting changes. Nurse Susan Evans, who blew the whistle on the clinic when she realised that colleagues had referred a distressed 16-year-old boy for hormone treatment after only four appointments. She said that she saw the service under tremendous pressure from trans campaign groups, and she was alienated by other staff when she questioned this. Her revelations are frightening. Allegations that gay children were being converted to believing they were trans... Over 20,000 children referred since 2004. It seems no coincidence to me that since all this gender pronoun nonsense has escalated, so too has gender confusion. And dare you question it, you'll be ostracised. Like J.K. Rowling, who came out in support of Alison Bailey, who won her case against her employer for the right to stand up against trans extremism. You were called a transphobe by a vocal minority for daring to express your concern. But the tide is turning, and thank God. Let's take this further and reclaim our female and male-only spaces. There's always space for an alternative and for compassion, but we shouldn't all be forced to share it for fear of offending. I don't want to share my space with a man, and men don't want to share theirs with me for the sake of a small minority. It's time to go back to basics and let kids be kids.